All right, boys, it's time. Time to delve deep into the pits of disappointment and drudge up pure emotional pain. There is not much fun to be had here, and you all need to know that things are gonna get depressing fast. Not because Gantz is super sad or anything, it just wasn't that great of an anime. Man, it should have been because the manga is fucking awesome. Now, let's take a step back and explain some things before we get started. Gantz is the anime adaptation of the manga written by Hiroya Oku, who is a complete madman. No joke, this dude's batshit crazy, but that same insane Sandy spawned some really creative stories. You have Inuashiki for one, which is about a middle-aged business guy that turns into a cyborg and fights a homicidal edgelord kid, and Gigant, a manga about a big titty porn star that grows into a giant and fights aliens. Yeah, these things actually exist, I'm not fucking around. But his agreed-upon magnum opus is Gantz, which can be described like this. So you take Power Rangers and smash it together with Killing Floor, throw in some Lovecraftian cosmic horror bullshit, and Garth Ennis is jerking off in the corner. That's Gantz. Here's a basic summary of the plot. Two Japanese high schoolers end up dying in a subway accident one day, only to awaken in a mysterious apartment with a group of other strangers. They all discover that they've been mysteriously resurrected by an unknown black orb called Gantz, which gives them high-powered alien weapons and black bodysuits, ordering them to hunt down and kill various creatures wreaking havoc in Japan. From there, these average slubs fight to stay alive as the odds are increasingly stacked against them. Gantz ultimately serves as a test of human behavior. Both the best and darkest parts of these characters are pulled to the surface throughout each hunt. The story explores themes like sadism, loyalty, drama, purpose, and human insignificance. Mix all of this together with one of the darkest senses of humor out there, and the story comes together in a way that really isn't much like anything else. The manga is one of the best action horror stories out there, super weak and rushed ending aside. I can't recommend reading it highly enough. Sure, you can definitely argue that it's incredibly edgy and over the top with its depictions of sex and violence, but fuck you, it's fun. Gantz is kind of deceptive at first. It's not really something to take super seriously. Yes, there are some outright horrific moments, and terrible things happen to characters that really don't deserve it, but the entire tone of Gantz feels like it's intentionally goofy. The reason I brought up Garth Ennis earlier is because Gantz Gantz can feel similar to some of his shit, like Preacher or The Boys, where the story is so nihilistic and dark that it's funny. If you go into Gantz with the expectation that you're going to experience a grim and brutal story of survival, which absolutely nobody can really blame you for doing, then you might think it is so crazy that it's stupid, especially when you get to the part where the panda joins the game. But that's where you really have to understand what Gantz as a manga is. Yes, it can be genuinely upsetting. You will feel things when you read Gantz. Equal part blind hype at the fights, an attachment to flawed human characters that are pulled through living hell, horniness when you read the chapter where you get to see Kishimoto's butthole, and outright laughter at the kooky jokes and situations these characters end up in. Gantz is funny, disturbing, depressing. There is no singular tone for this. It's everything and everywhere. You can have a chapter filled with god-tier fan service, which is just trying to be fun, and is immediately followed up by an existential crisis that asks very unsettling questions about the nature of what it means to be alive. As stated, Hiroya Oku is a very out-there kind of writer, and especially an artist. This dude was using CG technology in the 90s to make manga, literally modeling and sculpting characters to trace over, despite 90s CGI being a clunky mess that was probably a nightmare to work with. And it was all because he could. Granted, it put him on the edge of bankruptcy, and the manga where he first tried this method was an abomination that got cancelled after three volumes, but then along came Gantz. Gantz is an unstable mess of a story that just sort of works. It goes from blood-soaked horror to high school drama, then becomes a story of a man trying to protect his only relative from physical abuse, then goes right back to creature feature shit. Hiroya wanted to explore what daily life would be like for people stuck in such an impossible and nightmarish set of circumstances. How would a kid be able to just go back to school after just barely surviving a night where monsters butchered all of your friends? It's so crazy and interesting that you really need to check it out purely for the sake of knowing this exists. So how did the anime fuck all of this up? Well, well, let's get started. Gantz the anime came out in 2004, which was still relatively early in the span of the manga, which started in 2000. It has 26 episodes altogether, and covers three arcs or games. The Onion Aliens, the Bird Monsters described as robotic versions of 70s pop singer Saiji Tanaka, and the Buddha Temple filled with killer statues. Do you guys still think this is trying to be serious? Now, for the most part, the anime is actually a pretty faithful adaptation of the source material. If anything, I think it actually manages to be a bit more graphic than the manga. The slaughter with the big onion alien 
scene is actually shown in detail, instead of the mere flashes you got in the book. Actually seeing these people get ripped apart is fun. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue that it matches the subtext or anything like that, I just like seeing the red stuff fly everywhere. The violence all around is really good in this show. It's not afraid to spray blood and meat at you. Kato and Kai's death scene in the beginning was super well done, with their heads flying in the air away from what was left of their bodies. In fact, let me take a step further and say that the first few episodes of Gantz aren't half bad. In fact, they're almost pretty good, because a lot of the issues somebody might have with the first few episodes are almost completely on purpose. Think none of the characters are really that great or likable? That's kind of the point. Gantz doesn't always pull in badasses or superheroes. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are just random joppers that were unlucky enough to die and catch the attention of the ball. You don't know what Gantz is or why it's even doing any of this. Sure, they tease a few possible explanations. Maybe it's all a big government experiment or a really fucked up reality show. Could be that all of the characters are already dead and buried but are stuck in hell forever. Or maybe it's aliens. I mean, it is aliens, but you're never given a clear explanation of where Gantz came from. And the idea that humans could have actually developed it gets increasingly harder to believe, especially considering there's now a spinoff called Gantz E, which takes place in Edo period Japan. So if that's considered canon, then it's impossible that Gantz was ever created by humans. It's an aspect of the story that dips into being Lovecraftian. The characters have no idea what's going on, nothing is ever explained, and really they're fighting forces that are so, so far advanced from them. None of the cast really knows what they're doing. They have no idea how the suits work, what the guns are, why they have to kill monsters, or the fact that their participation in the hunts are mandatory instead of merely encouraged. Gantz never explains this to them, or even the audience. You have to find out the rules when they do, and the anime is faithful to this. I argue that the first mission, and even a little bit of the aftermath, were adapted very well. That sense of mystery around Gantz is kept, and the dysfunction of this random group of strangers thrown together is done well. When the mission actually starts, you can immediately pick up on just how not qualified these people are to handle these threats. Half of them don't even think it's real, so when things go to shit, you're on board. It shows that even with all the powerful guns and bodysuits they get their hands on, these are still regular people that can make mistakes, and shit goes from bad to worse. This attempt to explore the perspective of random normies trapped in a life and death game is really cool. It just sucks that you realize that the anime isn't exactly good at doing that. Gantz, as an anime, suffers from a few massive flaws. The biggest one being the pacing. The pacing for this show is awful. So bad that it actively kneecaps this at every step. There were so many scenes where I was screaming in my head for one of these guys to pull the trigger or to run into a room already. And this isn't done for tension, at least in a way that is entertaining and thrilling. The manga, by comparison, is far better paced. Yes, characters hesitate to shoot in the beginning, but it's done with a sense of what the fuck are you expecting them to do. These people eventually become badasses that aren't afraid to kill monsters dead, but right now they're just normal dudes that haven't even used a gun before. One of the contestants in the game is a literal grandma. You really want grandma to fight monsters? She'll break her hip, you heartless bastards. Oh, I guess she died. There is a sense that the hesitation is a part of these characters. It's an actual conflict that is interesting to see. The anime just wastes your time. Entire minutes pass by where you're just watching people stand around, actively not fighting monsters or saving their friends. It's like the show ground to a halt, just for the sake of padding it for time. It's especially infuriating to watch when you did read the manga, so you know how these characters are supposed to react in a scene. It's worse than boring, it's outright annoying. Another crippling issue with this show are the deviations from the manga. Granted, some of them actually helped flesh out the characters and their relationships. I like seeing Kai and Kishimoto spend more time together, and see more of a nuanced take on the love triangle between him, her, and Kato. It especially made what happened in the Buddha temple hit harder. But then that arc ends, and you get five episodes of literal filler. Filler that isn't even that good, and it feels pointless, tacked on, and is a blatant result of the anime catching up to the manga. Which might actually explain why the pacing is so fucked and slow to begin with. Now please, don't confuse my bitching about the tone as some sort of attack on slow burn stories. I fucking love them, but Gantz isn't trying to make you digest what you're seeing on the screen. It's not complicated or hard to think about. Unfortunately, it doesn't even have the luxury of being so pretentious that it thinks that's what it's doing. No, it's literally just wasting your time, which breaks my fucking heart to say. The whole anime feels like a tragedy, but not in a good way. It feels like there were people involved with the show that really wanted it to be good, but then something happened that just caused it all to fall apart. It sucks, because Gantz is a 
really fun series that I highly recommend, so it deserves an adaptation that treats the material with respect and can entertain both newcomers and fans alike. That boy is our last hope. No. There is another. Let's talk about Can Zero. Gantz Zero is the 2016 CGI film adaptation of Gantz. It's good. It's really good, actually. It serves as a standalone adaptation that focuses on the Osaka arc and follows Kato as the protagonist after Kai gets murked hard in the intro. Long story short, this movie solves all of the problems that the 2004 anime has. The pace is significantly quicker, and the only real change from the manga you see comes from the boss fight with the shapeshifting alien, where the guy tries to rape the giant naked lady made out of naked ladies. This series is fucking wild, man. Now, the movie leaves that out, and it's more of just a generic monster. Not really a big deal, since adapting it into the movie would probably scare away people curious to check out the manga. Let them slowly adjust to the insanity instead of throwing them in headfirst. But what makes Zero work so well is that it really is a great starting point for those that want to jump in, despite taking place pretty far in the timeline, and a lot of that is because of how the story is told. It treats Kato and the audience as fish out of water, so while he's learning things, we are too. On top of that, it really is its own story. You can watch Zero, never touch the rest of the series, and feel satisfied with what you got, even though the ending is a clear attempt to sequel bait and is a large nod to the bigger story around it. But if you want it to end there, it absolutely can. So to wrap all of this up, the 2004 anime is really rough. I can only recommend it to people that have already read the series, and you just want to see the beginning animated. Other than that, stick with the manga and don't look back. Also, Zero is a a pretty good watch, so if you want to get into Gantz and want to watch something before dedicating time to sit down and read it, definitely give the movie a shot. It's on Netflix and it's pretty great. Still, neither adaptation beats the manga itself. It's the best experience and you will not regret giving it a read. That's all I have to say about Gantz. It's a heavily flawed adaptation of a fantastic manga. Is it fun? Sure. But the manga is way more fun and doesn't make you want to pull your hair out in parts. Still, it's not the worst thing on the planet, just disappointing. And hell, it gave me an excuse to talk about the manga. That's always a good thing. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys.